Thistle on Tori Exchange video series, a new video series from Thistle on Tori developed by our members and for our members. The aim of for this monthly series to provide a short bank of videos between five to 15 minutes consisting of teaching jabs, tried and true lesson ideas, technology that helps you to work more efficiently and time-saving tips for educators. My name is Gunol. And today, it gives me a great pleasure to introduce our two presenters, Karen Sharavi and James Peppel. I will start with Karen. She's an EAP program manager at York University English Language Institute. She has an MA in teaching English as a foreign language from L London Metropolitan University, UK. And her research interests include innovation in classroom teaching, test preparation courses, and using technology. Our second presenter is James Peppel. He's a pop culture addict who likes to share his favorite TV shows, movies, and music with others. Culminating and in a workbook for Culture Link 2 with Oxford University Press, that focus on language learning, vocabulary, and Canadian media. He is currently the Interim Associate Director with York University's English Language Institute, where he enjoys working and writing on educational technology and vocabulary acquisition. Today, Tussle Exchange video is titled Building Virtual Tours for Language Classes by the end of today's video, we will learn how to construct a virtual tour and the elements of good design. A kind reminder to other audiences. Just like make sure to have S, um, access to H5P tools, a camera and an LMS, then you are ready to go. I'm super excited about this virtual tour. And let's move on to our presentations. Over to you, Karen and James. Okay. Um, well, thank you uh, for having us here today. Um, you know, we've been very excited about this topic for quite some time. Uh, Karina and I have been exploring uh, building virtual tours. Uh, we started by looking at the virtual tours that are out there already. Uh, and uh, since then, we've uh, taken on actually building a few ourselves uh, with our own camera and equipment. And we hope to be able to share some of that with you today. Um, you know, with uh, the advent of technology and all of us being uh, now online, these sort of technologies are that much uh, easier to use. And I think that you'll find uh, that with a few free tools uh, that you'll be able to put something uh, very successful together as well. So thank you, Gunul, and thank you, Jim, uh, for, the, for the introduction. Uh, what we are hoping today to, to, to do is to help everybody be equally interested in the tools that we're going to share with you uh, the same way we are actually have been um, interested in using. And so, and so have our students been very, very happy to integrate in their learning process. So uh, basically, when we are looking at today's presentation, I'm going to just introduce a few things things that Jim will talk about uh, later in details. But in our virtual tool, we're going to be talking about um, ways where we can support our students through their spatial and cognitive skill development, support concept building, and also increase motivation in uh, for learning, especially in a remote environment. And then also uh, bring in the task um, interface as well as collaborative learning styles so that we can turn a sophisticated learning interaction into a fun one. Um, last but not least, we're going to talk about several digital domains that will help the students uh, turn uh, learning about abstract uh, instruction into a wonderful, enjoyable, concrete, and fun e learning experience. And so uh, when we look at, you know, sort of why virtual tours, um, you know, we, we think that uh, the technology is uh, robust enough now um, uh, to allow for these type of experiences and that virtual tours uh, complement rather than replace traditional curriculum. Um, and then it provides us with a valuable learning um, where we can develop content for others. Back to me. So main benefits. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty fond of the Keller's ARC model, and I don't know if a lot of you are familiar with it, but Keller was able to 
to um, create a, a new model, which we call the ARCS, uh, which stands for attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction. And he, in his motivational design, uh, he said that most of the instruct, if we follow this instructional design, that would lead to maximum motivation. And obviously the tools that we're gonna discuss today, especially in augmented reality, will show us how we can actually integrate all of these in an EAP or English for Academic Purposes and Learning context. Next, uh, you know, we want to share a few of our uh, photos of, of this journey with you, just so that you know, uh, you know, what we've been really playing around with for the last uh, year and a half or so. Um, this actually, this uh, collection of photos happens to be uh, from Mohawk College, uh, where we went to uh, in the uh, fall of, of 2019. And uh, we had a great time exploring uh, some of their virtual reality and augmented reality products. Um, uh, and it really got us inspired to, to delve deeper into this topic and, and to, uh, uh, to try our hand at making some of the things that we had uh, only seen before. And so you can see uh, we, we played around with remote access, like the uh, um, augmented reality mirror there in the uh, upper left-hand corner. Uh, we, we played around with, uh, of course, VR goggles, some of the things that uh, are going to be coming out uh, in the near future. Um, you know, the, the fact that they were cordless uh, even then was, uh, was something that was truly impressive. And I think the big takeaway for us was that, uh, that each of these environments uh, was really an immersive experience. And, and that's what we were hoping to gain uh, and to be able to provide to our students now that they're online and, and with COVID uh, and they can't attend these physical places anymore is to still try to give that experience and to allow for students to feel like they're there even when they can't be. So when we went back home, full of excitement and wonders about all these magical tools, we realized also that theory collaborates that and supports that in so many ways. So we, we, uh, our institute is kind of built big on uh, student-centered learning, and we are very keen on helping the students learn and acquire all types of skills with, with, with same focus and attention. But then we realized that the immersive learning um, allows us to actually enhance those learning of those skills. So we discovered the cone of learning by Edgar Dale, and it was interesting to see, for instance, that through immersive learning, especially through VR, we can integrate seeing and hearing together, and that would increase and enhance learning by 50% through exhibits and demonstrations, and then we also realized that, and because we love so much, and Jim can talk a little bit about that too, about workshops and collaborative lessons, um, where the students can speak and write about their experiences. And through virtual learning, um, uh, VR in particular, they will be able to remember 70% more information. Last but not least, we thought that, okay, students can learn also through doing. But how will we do that? We do that through direct experience. They are actually going to use those tools themselves as we were gonna see in the following slides. And by doing that, research indicates that they might be able to remember even 90% more information through that model. So not, with not much ado, we'll go to the following slide to see how we did that in our classrooms. So um, we're gonna talk a little bit about making virtual uh, tours now. Um, and uh, the first thing is uh, we want to talk a little bit about some of the steps uh, in order to, uh, you know, create a tour. Um, and I think what's important is uh, to be able to first think about what the course outcomes are. That's where we like to stop, uh, start. Um, and to be able to make sure that you have the photos that you're going to need um, to be able to, to replicate um, the location. Um, to try to figure out where in those images are, are the information and the key points that we want to be able to expand by adding in video or text uh, or, or other images uh, to be able to, uh, you know, give them additional information. Um, and we want to be able to, to sort of open the, the virtual tour for the students to be able to use, uh, to put all those uh, elements together. Uh, and then finally, uh, before we release to the students to be able to go through and make sure that all the links work um, to test and retest uh, before we finally publish and share. And so now uh, we're going to show you just a, a brief video of uh, one of our first experiments with uh, building a virtual tour. Um, we took a camera 
uh, out to uh, Niagara on the Lake, as you can see here. Um, and I uh, took a, a 360 image of, of that location uh, and then tried to build around it. So I'm going to see if I can click the video here and uh, hopefully you can see a little bit about how it works. And so, uh, as you can see, uh, I, I'm in the video along with my son. Um, we uh, took these shots um, uh, and then decided to add in some information uh, around some of the pieces that uh, students might be interested in, like the gazebo here. Now we'll talk a little bit about how you can make your own videos. So... Oh. Um, yeah, we'll uh, we'll turn it over to you, Kareen, to to talk a little bit about the video. Okay, great, thanks, Jim. So basically, I think uh, the wonders of the LMS tools and plugins that we have now, especially the free ones, make our life much easier. So um, we are using Moodle platform, and like most of the other LMSs platforms, they um, we can actually build like H5P plugins there with multiple forms of activities that the students would enjoy. So what we've done is we've added um, a 360 video to one of our activities. And let me just play a video quickly. Uh, I don't know if you can help me play that, Jim, so that we can show how easy in less than two minutes you can create a wonderful, interesting activity. As you can see, we choose the interactive tool, which is H5P. We add it, very easy, it takes a few seconds. Like all other activities, we add the description, usually the title to help us find it later on and obviously to also type in or choose the, in, the interactive video tool. Um, to make it easier for everybody, also give your activity a title so that you can find it later on. And this is the only most difficult part in the activity, just to find a 360 model or interactive video online just add it and then obviously add all or any type of interactions that you like. H5P allows you to include many types of activities, multiple choice, true or false, uh, fill in the gaps, even cards. And when you have a 360 video model there, you can actually move it around and basically also help you and help the students to find their way around the video and be able to complete the tasks. Once we have added the question and we've added here one type of question, which is a true or false one. You choose to display the mode and add the question as I've done so. And in a few minutes, you will see that we will be able to save and you can actually share this question with your students. It's very important also to uh, play with um, the type of um, adjustments that you want for the video. Like basically, if you want to add pauses, if you want to time the activity, if you want to give feedback for the activity, all of these are extra perks and um, 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 basically uh, ways to uh, edit your question. Now we're ready to save and display and we have our activity ready. And here you go, that's what it looks like. Voila, one complete activity in less than two minutes. Thanks, Green. So if you don't have um, you know, access to a Moodle or um, to H5P content, uh, there's no reason to, uh, to worry or be concerned. Um, it's still quite easy to, uh, to build and make these things uh, on your own. Um, one of the things that you can do is you can start by downloading Google Expeditions and the Tour Creator uh, uh, as a, an app on your phone or on your computer. Um, this will allow you to also build uh, at least until the end of uh, this summer um, because uh, Google Expeditions is, is closing down uh, on June 30th. Um, but until then, you can uh, create these for free. 
But if you're not wanting to uh, to maybe do that, uh, then the other thing that you can do is uh, to go to Google Arts and Culture, uh, where they have over 600 of these uh, virtual tours already saved. Uh, and you can find usually one uh, on the location that you're looking for, uh, and you can drop in a pre-existing one. Um, and so that's maybe something that uh, would appeal to, to some as well. Um, if you're wanting to do this, of course, uh, the same sort of rules apply. Um, try to plan out how you're going to be doing this with the class, um, whether you want them to do it through their computer or to actually wear the Google go um, goggles. Um, you know, that, that might be a little bit of a challenge these days. Um, make sure that you have the app and that the students have the app as well. Um, and then of course, again, start the tour, uh, act as the guide and, and hopefully um, also follow up with some discussions and activities. Um, one other site that I'd recommend is uh, also historyview.org uh, where you can see a number of historical uh, virtual reality tours uh, set in the past, which I think is also quite good as well. Now, uh, there are some pain points, of course. Um, you know, whenever you're using technology, uh, there's the possibility of a crash or of slow Wi-Fi that uh, will disrupt. But with appropriate planning, uh, you can prevent all of these things. And as you can see, it, it doesn't take very long to build a, a tour as long as you have uh, some raw footage and, and a bit of creativity, uh, you can work around it. So if your students don't have the headsets, that's not a problem. They can still scroll through in the computer. Um, you know, if they are using it through the phone, make sure that, of course, that the students have, have charged their phones beforehand. Um, try not to make the, the virtual tour too long because students can still become distracted, um, despite the fact that it's immersive. And if they can't download the app, then, uh, you know, always have a backup plan. Um, you know, it's, it's easy to, uh, to still get, rather than 360 photos that you can move, uh, you can always have a, a, ver a version of it where it's just still photos, um, you know, and maybe that's a way to bypass it for, for students. So I'll turn it over to Kareen for the conclusion. Well, um, I think um, one of the most important points that we would like to leave with everybody today is that virtual tools provide immersive experiences um, uh, in an enjoyable learning environment for our students. Um, they make the information stick. Uh, the students enjoy them so much and they always ask us to add more and more of those wonderful experiences to their learning environment. Um, it allows our students to work in teams, to collaborate, and not only to collaborate with each other, but to collaborate with the instructors. I think the students enjoy most when we give them the opportunity to create their own, what we call assets and, and activities as well. So it's a joint adventure between um, instructors and students and all that leads to wonderful experiences of learning. Um, the last thing I would like to say that, um, our schools now, not only here in Ontario, but also all around the world, um, we have to learn how to reimagine education in a remote environment, in a hybrid environment. Um, virtual tools give us the ability to bring the world into the classroom. In the past, we took the students around and took to trips to learn about, let's say, Canada and Ontario in our case. But now, because they're remote, we still have to give them the same experiences and learning opportunities, not only to learn about the language, but to learn about the culture of the country as well. Um, remote, remote learning has given us the opportunity to enjoy those activities remotely, virtually, through augmented reality, through virtual reality. And I think everybody's taking in this advantage and enjoying the learning experience together. Uh, and so we'll leave you with a few of our references there and resources in case you want to look up uh, any of the background that we've we've been reading on on this subject. Um, and then finally, um, we'll leave you with our contact information. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to us. Uh, we'd be more than happy to share what we've learned. Uh, we're only beginners in this as well, um, but we're uh, you know encouraged by the progress that we've had so far. And uh, if you have any questions or you think we could help, uh, we'd be happy to answer your questions. Thank you. Thank you. That was great. Thanks again, Karen and James for this excellent educational video. We truly appreciate it. And dear audience, if you enjoyed today's video, please check out our video from the Tussle Exchange play playlist. There are great resources. 
So make sure to explore the YouTube channel. Finally, if you would like to contribute an educational short video, make sure to check the link in the information box below. Have a great day and see you next time.